I trained as a sculpture conservator and I worked for many years working on um, kind of historical objects um, from sort of museum artifacts, uh, sort of 18th century marble statues, church monuments, um, all manner of, of different materials all around the country. And I think you're always sort of influenced by kind of historical sources and um, you know you can kind of gather some information from different periods and different styles and incorporate them into your work you know and, and, um, and try and sort of use it in a contemporary way. We've worked in some fairly you know interesting places. Hardwick Hall features uh, in the folder. As I went along and uh, uh, sort of studied and uh, worked in the industry I kind of took a a sort of selection of photographs and it's quite good to kind of keep a record of, of you know obviously what you've done and where you've worked and uh, what materials you know kind of you encountered and what processes and techniques that you use and of course it's all good for sort of referencing things in the future and we've got some objects from from Derbyshire you know the Derbyshire black marble and we actually worked uh, at Hardwick Hall on some of the stonework um, and we did see uh, some of the, the stone in the house and it's, it's fascinating really. Right, we've got some of the tools that um, some of the workers on this Ashford black marble used to use and I think they're quite interesting. I think that some of them are a bit strange and odd but they're clearly used for kind of um, shaping some of the smaller pieces of marble. Quite interesting, they used to buy in these little boxes full of semi-precious stones um, to kind of inlay and, and, and shape and some of them are really really delicate you've got these really fine kind of uh, tweezer like implements which can be used to obviously place things and little magnifying glasses which are really nicely handmade and handmade scribes super pieces all used to obviously control the material and to create some of the shape and inlays and carved materials and I think we've got some of the, the chisels here that we use with tungsten tips and claw chisels, so these are the kind of modern equivalent really. Although they would have used tools like this uh, back then of course, uh, just in the same way, uh, maybe not with you know, kind of modern, highly tempered steel, but similar. And we've got some fine rifflers as well, which uh, can be used to, to obviously shape the marble um, and smooth things off. And then finally, you know, with a sort of final phase of sort of sanding the material down, they would have used leather uh, with all sorts of different abrasive powders to kind of create that final finish on the surface to give it that polish um, but with a more modern material you know kind of uh, velcro back discs which attach to um, the angle grinders so you can use a kind of a mechanical version of that and do it really fast. It's interesting that you know the material has sort of fallen out of favour a little bit and I think the process in, in actually quarrying uh, marble and limestone generally um, has become not so efficient and, and kind of expensive and the material itself has gone through a bit of a, a transition and it's not become, it's not as popular as it used to be and has become um, slightly old fashioned I suppose and more modern materials are used now to replace it. The Derbyshire quarries and some of the other quarries in that region um, you know, have closed down and you know, there's not that demand for it anymore. Um, it, you know, that popularity has just sort of declined and uh, the material's not used, but there are little pockets of people that do use it still and I'm one of them. And I do use, you know, the carboniferous limestones and marbles and limestone generally. And, uh, and there still are sort of specialists that use the material.